everybody, I am back from my week in Canada, which was wonderful. I got spoiled rotten for a week. I want to go back and get spoiled rotten more. But I'm here with a Top 5 Wednesday. This week's Top 5 Wednesday is the Top 5 Books You Struggled to Finish. Yeah. It's not too often that I struggle with books when I read them. I mean, really struggle with books, so I remember the ones that I struggle with. It's so rare that it happens. Number five on this list is the first book I ever recall really struggling with, and that is A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. A lot of people in schools here in the States will read um, Tom Sawyer or Huck Finn. Usually Huck Finn, I think, more than Tom Sawyer. But Connecticut Yankee is one that Twain wrote about a man who is obviously from Connecticut, he's a Yankee, and he somehow manages to time travel to King Arthur's court and sets himself up as like a sorcerer, prophet, blah blah blah. Fun story, fun concept. The issue I had was the language. I was probably way too young when I was trying to read it, I don't know. But I recall getting to a point in the book. Mark Twain was a master of dialect, and he decided to have this woman approach our protagonist and just rattle off in some weird like old middle english style dialect and i was lost i was like i can't seriously i remember putting the book away and just not picking it up for like two years and then i finally finished it and i don't even remember most of it because i just sort of like skipped that passage i was like never again going to read that I, I'm sure if I were to read it now, I'd love it or what have you, but I'm just so tainted by the memory of struggling with that passage. Never again. Never again. Number four on this list is The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. I read this book for school in my final year of high school. It was part of my AP English Literature course, and I hated this book. I really did. I disliked this book intensely, and I understand it's considered a classic. I hated it so much. I remember um, struggling to read it. The attitude of Tim O'Brien was so condescending when I read it that I was just like, really? And I think a lot of it was also, I read it and I'm going, this feels like apocalypse now. <laughs> did Francis Ford Coppola call you and demand, like, <laughs> you were remuneration. I don't know, I remember struggling to finish it and then when I got to the end, uh, the last like few paragraphs made me so angry that I threw the book. I was so pissed at it. Number three on this list is The Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. I was given The Lord of the Rings as a gift when the first movie was starting to come out. My mum had read them when she studied for a year in France and she loved them so she gave them to me because she thought I'd like them. I'd read by this point The Chronicles of Narnia. I'd read um, the Time Quartet by Madeleine Langle, and I loved fantasy and you know Harry Potter and stuff like that. So she figured Lord of the Rings is a good step for me to go to. It's the big classic fantasy tome. She got a massive bind up of all th of Fellowship, Two Towers, and Return of the King, and gave them to me to read. It took me like three tries to even get past the first few chapters of Fellowship. And I almost quit when I hit Tom Bombadil. Because god damn it, I hate Tom Bombadil. But beyond that, I had a really hard time connecting with the writing style. I thought that Tolkien was an amazing world builder and a really good story creator. But in terms of telling the story, it was so dry. It felt like a history textbook. And I was just like, I can't enjoy this most of the time. So it took me a long time to read that massive bind up that I own. Whereas The Hobbit took me like no time whatsoever. I loved The Hobbit, but Lord of the Rings just took me so long to read. I just always remember it, it, it was just like, I went in thinking, oh, fantasy, I love it. And I was just like beating my head against the wall so many times when I was reading it. Number two on this list is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This is another book I had to read for school. I read it three different times for like three separate classes and each time 
I just disliked that book more and more and it became harder and harder for me to read it even though I knew exactly what was going to happen but because you have English class you have to go you have to read and you have to annotate it it was just so frustrating to have to keep reading that book and so I would get angrier and angrier the more I had to read it and so I'd go slower and slower through it which only made the problem worse but I always struggled with it not even necessarily because of the dialect there's another book that's written in dialect um it's a very thick southern dialect I didn't have a problem with that my issue was that I didn't like the characters and I didn't like the story so I would just be sitting there having to read it going I don't care I don't care I really really don't care and that always makes reading difficult and so I'll end up struggling with a book if I don't care about it and finally the number one book that I have struggled to finish I had to read this my final year at high school for again AP English Lit and this book I had in a mass market version which are those small tiny little paperbacks and it was like you know thick something like 800 pa 800 something pages tiny print those like paper thin pages and that is The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand this book was torturous on average a seven to eight hundred page book will take me between seven to eight hours this took me a week and a bit to read i struggled so much reading this book because oftentimes i was like i just i don't understand why this is so well beloved like it's not a novel okay it is a philosophical treatise that's masquerading as a novel. It's very much Ayn Rand's objectivism and she has just decided to try and tell a story around it with architecture. And I was just like, I hate this. I was like, I hate everything about this. Okay, maybe except some of the prose. Some of the prose was quite lovely. But I just, I, I struggled so much with this book and it was so funny, my mom would laugh at me. She goes, now you know how it feels to be a normal person and read at a normal speed. I was like, no, this is not normal speed. This is awful. How do you people stand it? Ugh. I hated that book. And I remember <laughs> the great irony of my struggle with that book is for it, my teacher had us enter the Ayn Rand essay contest and I sent in my paper that I'd written and I was some sort of semi-finalist something. And so they sent me a copy of Atlas Shrugged. Again, a little mass market. I think it's even longer than The Fountainhead. I have never even cracked it open. <laughs> oh my god, if I haven't thrown that out yet, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, it's, a, yeah, I think it's in a box in my closet somewhere. I never even cracked it open because I struggled so much with The Fountainhead and I took zero enjoyment out of it that I have beyond zero interest in reading Atlas Shrugged. I don't care who John Galt is, I don't think I ever will. But yeah, that's all for me, so until next time, cheers.